Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Centennial Conference Corner. My name is Amber Thomas, and today I'm joined by Portia Hoyk, Executive Director for the Centennial Conference. Thanks for joining me, Portia. Thanks, Amber, for inviting me all the way down the hallway. <laughs> so we've been celebrating Title IX all year long. Uh, Title IX is a short statute, but has made a major impact on the uh, world of education. Why was it important for our conference to utilize the 50th anniversary of Title IX to celebrate our trailblazers and visionaries in our conference? Well, I think that the Centennial Conference um, has had a tremendous history of strong female leadership and even um, even stronger male champions. So it only seemed fitting that we celebrate this milestone leading up to the, the 50th anniversary and, and be a part of recognizing how far we've come, yet um, also noting where we stand today as a conference and many of our member institutions and then what we can do moving forward. Yeah, as you mentioned, we do have really strong history of women leaders in our conference. Uh, what does it mean for you to be able to continue the torch of holding programs like our Snow Shilling for a Symposium that impacts and helps our undergraduate women who are interested in careers in leadership in athletics, as well as this celebration with Title IX? Well, first off, the Snell Schillingford Symposium is one of my absolute favorite programs that our conference is a part of. Um, every time I listen to Jen Schillingford, I feel like I learned something new about the world and the Centennial Conference history. Um, she's a tremendous storyteller. Um, she has so much knowledge. Um, so I, I do feel privileged to have been able to interact with her and engage with her through the, the symposium. Um, but I think ultimately the opportunity to engage with our female student athletes across the membership and assist them in their personal and professional development is just extremely gratifying. Uh, it, it makes me proud that we are one of the trailblazers in this space and that other conferences have utilized our symposium as a template for the symposiums and the programs that they've put together. But I, I think it's tremendously important that we're um, a part of the development of these young women and we continue to strengthen our program and, and raise the next leaders and in, in not only college athletics, but just the next leaders of the world. We're, we're not just limiting ourselves to athletics and we know that these women are capable of so much. Um, so it makes me extremely proud that our conference is, is doing that through this nail um, showing for symposium and all the volunteers that have been a part of it, all the coaches and administrators that help run it. Um, it's a really unique program and it's just a, a wonderful marquee event for our conference overall. Absolutely. And now we see administrators who back in the day participated in Snell. So we know we're doing something right. Absolutely. <laughs> so as we talk about women leaders in our conference, we definitely cannot leave you out. Uh, you cemented your name in Division Three history in 2019, becoming the first African-American woman to ascend to the commissioner's chair at the Division Three level. Um, what advice would you give to anyone interested in going to athletic administration, as well as kind of what was your journey to the commissioner's chair? Um, my journey, I, I felt like at the time was a little bit unusual in that I, I came through the campus uh, athletic administration ranks. Um, I had never coached, but everything that I had done had been on the administrative side. And after being an athletic director for a few years um, and this opportunity presenting itself in the Centennial Conference, it really seemed like the right fit for the right time in, in my career. Um, it wasn't anything that I necessarily had my sights set on, but given the the reputation of the Centennial Conference, um, both academically and athletically, um, that was a, a really hard thing to, to turn to turn away from. So um, I love working with our member institutions. I, I love the ways that we're challenged on a daily basis um, in this role. But I, I think my advice for, for anyone who's looking to work in college athletics, whether it's on the conference side or on the administrative um, campus side, is just to step outside of your comfort zone, 
you know, don't be afraid to move away from home or to take on some projects or initiatives or, or things you never thought you would be able to do um, just to strengthen yourself as an administrator. I mean, being in college athletics or any type of athletics is not for the faint of heart. So you, you certainly have to make sure that you have a, a strong will and, and strong confidence in yourself and your abilities. But ultimately, I think um, just making sure you uh, step outside your comfort zone and experience some new things and, and strengthen yourself as an administrator. And that's going to carry you well, no matter where you are in life. Yeah. Always appreciate the gyms. <laughs> so as we celebrate the history of the 50th anniversary of Title IX, I uh, can't help but think about what the next 50 years will look like. Um, from your standpoint, what are some things that you would like to see as we look towards the next 50 years, especially in athletics? Oh, um, where, where do I start? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would hope that I would like to see the hiring of women leaders, whether that's commissioners or athletic directors, um, become less of an anomaly and, and more of the norm. Um, I, I hope we see more women returning to coaching and providing our female student athletes with mentorship and, and being an example, a role model for, for what could be. Um, I also look forward to the continued, ex, uh, continued expansion of opportunities for women to coach men at all levels, whether that's, you know, the high school level or the professional level, because as we all know, it's already taking place in the reverse. But um, I, I think those are things we all have to look forward in the, in the future, but especially knowing uh, how critical the role of coaches is for, for many of our student athletes. Um, I think it'd be tremendous to see more women in that space. And I know now more than ever, it's, it's really hard to retain talent um, in the coaching ranks. But I think that's something that I really hope becomes more of a viable path for women. And, and as these young athletes see themselves in their coaches, um, hopefully they consider that as a, a viable career opportunity for them. So those are a few of my, my hopes for, for the next 50 years of, of Title IX and uh, that this just becomes more normalized, that we see more women and, and women of color um, in all of these positions just representing it as well as we know that they can. Yeah, we hope those hopes become realities. Yes. So I can't let you go just yet. Uh, we started something new called Amber's Top Five, which are five questions that I just have to know. <laughs> so summer is officially here. What is your favorite summer activity? Oh, I think my favorite is just grilling and just grilling and chilling, just hanging out outside grilling and chilling. <laughs> around the grill and, you know, having my husband cook and I'm just making the sides, um, some type of meat, you know, hunk of meat being smoked. But I, I think that's probably one of my favorite activities for the summertime. So this is a this or that, okay. a vacation or staycation? Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not staying around. Let me see something new. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> favorite centennial memory? Ooh. Watch our student athletes do tremendous things on the playing field. That's a favorite memory for me. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. Favorite women's sport team? Favorite women's sports team? Yeah. Professional, college? I'll take either or. Um, you know what? I know there's a documentary coming, so I'm going to say the Houston Comets back in the day. Um, okay. With Cheryl Swoops, Tina Thompson, Cynthia Cook, like that era that kind of kicked off the WNBA. That yeah. was that was quite a time to be um, a, a young a young woman looking up to just these tremendous athletes and what they did to kind of establish the league. And I'm really looking forward to the, the documentary, too. So that's one of my favorites. That's a good one. I remember back in the day, you know, the, the late 90s, uh, Cleveland had a women's basketball team called the Cleveland Rockers. And I think that was like my introduction into basketball, like going to those games. I was like, ooh, I want to play basketball because they're there. So I'm like, we need to bring back more of the WNBA team so other girls can feel that way too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so if you had to pick one song that defined the chapter of your life right now, what would it be? Only one song? <laughs> one song. 
I don't know. I've got like in my head right now, I've got Mary J. Blige. I, I've got Beyonce. I've got Anita Baker. I've, I've got Tupac. I've got a lot of artists in my head. <laughs> 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 I've got Kirk Franklin. I've got Mary Mary. I, I think that probably a compilation of hip hop or R&B and gospel would probably a mashup of all those would encapsulate this phase of my life right now. Because okay. those are good moment, ones. Yeah. In any given moment, I might need a little little prayer and a little inspiration in another moment. I might just need to get hype and, and be excited. And another moment, I might just need calm and some R and B to mm. smooth things out. So yeah, that would be some type of mashup of, of those genres and those. It's artists. all about the balance. It's all about the balance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Portia, for joining us. Thank you for having me, and congratulations! Okay. Great job with the Centennial Conference Corner. Thank you. So this is our last episode of the Centennial Conference Corner this year. You can catch a new episode this fall on our social media at Centennial Conf or our website, centennial.org. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>